boy! Let's get into this. Welcome back to First Episode Impressions, where I watch the first episode of an anime and feel the need to talk about it. With the summer lineup starting up, I finally got around to watching the spring anime! Sadly, this is sooner than expected from me, y'all should know this. Well, let's just cut to the chase since you all know why we're here. I'm gonna talk about the shows that aired in the spring 2021 lineup and whether or not it's worth watching. Note that I said new show since I will not be covering sequels or remakes, even though we all know Fruits Basket's the final- Hey, 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 you, you, you get out of here, you get out of here! God, the relentless. Anyways, Fruits Baskets, the final season, won the season for creating the world's record for how many tears we could shed for an anime. With all of that out of the way, let's quickly go over the shows that didn't really leave a good or a bad impression on me. First off, we have Erased, I mean Tokyo Revengers. But seriously, it's Erased. I mean, it's literally about a young man going back in time and seeing what he can do to change the future so that his past crush doesn't die in the future. The pacing is just a little too fast for me and I just find the characters really annoying, but feel free to tell me if it gets better or if it pulls off the story a bit better than Erased. From what I'm seeing on social media though, it's not looking likely. Combatants Will Be Dispatched is silly! Like it's classic anime comedy silly! That's it, really. Just a bunch of goofy characters finding themselves in silly situations while trying to take over the universe. It's harmless fun, so I might watch more later. Osamake is dumb! No offense to anyone who likes this, but this is just a dumb teen romance. The main character finds out that his crush has a boyfriend, so he and his childhood friend, who also has a crush on him, vow to take revenge on his broken heart. I am getting school days flashbacks, help me. Sorry, but I don't like the premise and I don't really like the characters. Next! Shadow's house looks amazing. I mean, look at this art style! It looks amazing! I love it! I love this aesthetic! I think the story is okay-ish though, nothing too special, but it looks cute! Look at this! If anything, if you want an interesting show to look at with these shadowy silhouette characters, give this one a shot. Mars is Red is a show I feel like I've seen a lot by now. Vampires are growing rapid throughout the city, so military officials have to stop them before they get out of hand. But it's another show where the characters try to bring some form of humanity within the vampires in order to use them for their own gain. Can the military find a way to use these vampires or dispose of them? A basic idea, but the first episode made me tear up a bit. Joran, Princess of Blood and Snow... I don't know, it looks kinda cool, and it gives me some Kill Bill vibes, honestly. Seems a little too generic, though, with agents protecting the Shogunate while the main character looks for the one who slaughtered her people. It's a very basic story, but it looks so darn cool. Burning Comedy is an interesting sports anime about a made-up sport. It can happen, we've had Keijo before. The characters are pretty good and the sport is easy enough to follow. Haven't really seen a good sports anime in a while, so this one kind of surprised me. Backflip is another decent sports anime revolving around men's rhythmic gymnastics. They use CGI motion capturing to animate the choreography, which is cool to watch, but the 3D models don't really blend in too well with the rest of the show. A for effort, though. Pretty Boy Detective is the worst version of Oran High School Host Club. Help me. An eccentric boy makes a club for pretty boys like him who want to solve mysterious cases throughout their school. So let's be real here. Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. Please tell me if anyone remembers Clamp School Detectives. No, I'm not old, quiet. Overall, the animation style is all over the place. The characters are annoying. Why is this shot a thing? Seriously, why am I hitting my head on ceiling lights? Help! And this boy seriously won't put his legs down. Put him down. I don't know why you do this. He loves his legs. He's a runner. I get it. But seriously, he just can't stop putting his legs in the air. The World Ends With You finally got its own anime adaptation and it is full of problems. The biggest problem is the pacing. It treats you like you already played the game, so you should already know what's going on right now, right? If that really was the case, then what was the bloody point in making an anime adaptation? Seven Nights Revolution is another boring mobile app game to anime, and we all know what to do about those by now. Know your fucking place, trash. 
Wasn't sure whether or not to include this since this involves Godzilla and that's a whole franchise on its own, but Godzilla SP acts like its own show and Rami really wanted to know my opinions on this. Overall, I can tell this is promising just from watching the first episode. The setup is interesting, the pacing is smooth, and the characters are pretty enjoyable. I'll try to watch more when I can. Let's Make a Mug 2 is a short and harmless show about a girl joining the Pottery Club. The main thing that makes this a little bit more interesting is her finding out that her mother was a pottery prodigy before she died. So it makes me wonder if she'll feel pressure to live up to her mother's skill levels. Well, it looks cute and the story isn't too bad, so if you're interested, go check it out. Blue Reflection Ray looks like another dark magical girl show, but I have no idea what's going on. Something about emotions, bad magical girls chasing after regular girls for some crystal flower in their hearts, so good magical girls have to stop them. Uh, I guess it'll be explained in the next episode, but I'm not that interested to find out. Cestus the Roman fighter looks and feels like anime gladiator but with a shonen protagonist. Are you not entertained? It's in 3D to show off the motion captured fight sequences, but that's all it has going for it. I mean, if you want to watch a 3D anime starring a slave boy fighting 100 battles for his freedom, I think you'll get a kick out of the fights. For me though, I'm just not that interested in the story. Also, this show has a serious case of who's the obvious main character syndrome since Cestus is the only interesting looking character compared to everyone else. Fairy Ranmaru falls under the category so bad it's actually kind of funny. Five gorgeous fairy boys head to Earth to obtain human attachments for their queen, whatever the hell that means. It seems like a sentimental series featuring boys doing their best to help young girls from bullying and such, but watching them transform... Um... Hmm... Is this a reverse version of Maho Shoujo Ore, but they just turned from skinny pretty boys to buff pretty boys. I don't know what to say, I, I, I just find their outfits a little too hilarious and the idea is ridiculous, but it's fun. It's, it's stupid, but fun to watch. I know it's kind of silly, but uh, consider this my new trash. Does anyone remember Gloomy? I remember seeing this merch at Hot Topic and a few of my friends had the merch, but uh... Yeah, he got his own miniseries. It's honestly just him beating up his innocent owner through misunderstandings and gags. I mean, if you like Gloomy, you might like this, but uh, a little too repetitive for me, so I'll pass. Okay, so I remember seeing everyone on Twitter and Facebook raving about this show, The Way of the House Husband. I finally got around to seeing the first episode, and it is cute, but a little too repetitive and predictive. A former Yakuza boss subverts society's expectations by becoming the best house husbando in the world. I mean, watching him go above and beyond for his working wife is pretty sweet, but the jokes are all the same. Is this it? Is this what we're raving over? It's cute and all, but I don't feel the need to watch more when it feels like I'm watching the same joke over and over again. I mean, no offense to anyone who likes it, it is cute, but I don't know. I think after the first episode, I, I know where it's going. Record of the Ragnarok is a pretty cool concept. The gods of every religion come together to face off against the most well-known warriors throughout human history. I was highly interested with this premise, especially seeing all of these gods represented in this show, and was looking forward to seeing the first fight. But I feel like the execution is just a bit off with all the forced and exposition. They have the meeting, agree to Ragnarok, we cut straight to Ragnarok, introduce our fighters, and and sit through endless babblings from characters representing both fighters. Why, why do I care about what you guys think about each fighter? Is this how we're supposed to know the characters? Just from their dialogue and not some sort of flashback of their history or something? The pacing is weird, but please tell me if it gets any better or not. I keep hearing mixed messages, but give it up for the one image everyone kept sharing from the show. Good ol' Aphrodite, ladies and gentlemen. At least I can say that it doesn't look like her back's hurting anytime soon. She's got good support. Link Click is one of the better Chinese anime to debut in the spring that's not involved with their lore or religion. It seems straightforward with two friends using their supernatural abilities to enter photos. It's an interesting heist series that turns into an emotionally packed series, putting these two through some existential dilemma. Can they keep their emotions intact while doing their job? If not, how much can they change if they get too involved? This packed on a lot more than I expected, so I might watch more. 
Eden is basic. Evil robots want to eradicate humans off the face of the earth, but a bunch of rogue robots work together to protect the little girl from being discovered by them. It's like Tarzan meets Terminator as the girl wants to find more of her kind, while the robots are trying to protect her from make evil robots. Seems very predictable, so I'll pass. And I'm just gonna throw this in because screw you, Netflix jail, Eden Zero. It made its debut in Japan, but Netflix wants to put it all on hold until they get all of the episodes dubbed or something. Yeah, that's totally gonna stop people from pirating. I mean, watching online, mm hmm. Well, I was able to watch the first episode, and let me just say, this is fairy tale in space. I get Eden Zero is its own thing with different characters, except Happy's in here. Hello, that's not confusing. But we have another anti-social protagonist with spiky hair raised by non-humans and meets a spunky yet curvy blonde girl that's gonna take him on an adventure, and together they will discover the power of love and friendship. Correct me if I'm wrong, please do, but this feels very repetitive, so it's a hard pass. All right, let's go over the ones that really stood out to me for good and bad reasons, leaving the best and worst ones for last. Let's do this. Higehiro starts off with a minor controversy of an adult man taking in a teenage girl as his roommate while she tried to offer him sex as a way to repay for his kindness. The show doesn't really make a joke of this topic though, as this is a serious situation that would land him in jail and her publicly shamed. With her revealing that she ran away from home and thinking no one would miss her, you ask yourself what is he meant to do? He wants to do the right thing for her and make sure she's safe, but doesn't really know what's right. Leave her alone so he'll be safe, but she could be in danger with someone else? Call her parents and possibly put her in a more troubling situation with them? Take her in out of the kindness of his heart but risking his entire future? It's an interesting commentary highlight in the complications of society, so I definitely recommend this one. 86 is an emotional one for sure. An elite society of pure-blood citizens are fighting against another country while claiming they're not losing any casualties with their advanced mecha suits doing all the fighting. Oh, and also they said there's no war in bossing say, so I just wanted to clear that up for you guys. That's not really the case though, as mixed bloods and refugees are forced to fight in these suits to win their battles while being treated less than humans. One soldier doesn't like this and acknowledges that there are humans in these suits dying for their war, but her higher-ups want her to conform, or else. It's a political and emotional show highlighting the great divide between different classes and how the social elites can truly abuse their power in the worst way. I've seen other shows like this, but I think 86 executes its narrative better than most. Vivi Fluorite Eyes Song is a singing idol Terminator show. Basically. <laughs> Vivi is a robot following her program to sing with all of her heart. That is, until a program from the future tells her that robots will eventually destroy the human race, and it's up to the both of them to figure out how to prevent the apocalypse from happening. This is one of the more original ideas I've seen in a while. You basically have a singing idol robot going against her programming to save the world, and I'm all for it. Definitely recommend this one. Koi Kimo is an absolutely hilarious rom-com that reminds me of how my parents met. A successful bachelor finds it pretty easy to hook up with beautiful women, but he loses interest with them shortly after dating them. That is until he's saved by his sister's classmate and takes a shine to her when she thinks his romantic advances make him out to be a creep. He instantly falls madly in love with her and wants to do everything he can to win her affection, but she's really not into it. I honestly find their interaction hilarious, so I'll try to watch more. Full Dive is complicated to me. On one hand, it's the story of a young man hating reality, using VR to escape his problems like he's about to become a hikikomori or something, but he tries an old game that earned a reputation for piling on more complicated problems for the players that it'll make you want to run back to reality. On the other hand, this kid is obviously facing depression and uses VR to feel better, but he was conned into buying this game that just punishes him for even trying to play the game. I get the whole face your problems vibe as it tries to make our protagonist learn how to face his reality instead of running away, but I just don't know how I feel about a teenager being punished through the one thing he uses to feel happy. Definitely mixed up about this. 
Don't tease me, Nagatoro. Is Uzaki chan wants to hang out times too? Oh boy. Nagatoro is suddenly fascinated with her senpai and takes pleasure in teasing him for some reason. At least Uzaki teased her senpai because she couldn't understand his lifestyle and just wanted him to have more fun with his life. But I'm not entirely sure why Nagatoro likes teasing this guy. Like, she thinks it's funny how he acts like a coward and tears up when she teases him. She definitely pushes him to the limit and finds it hilarious to see him blush. Many people raved over this show and just fell in love with Nagatoro. I guess I'll take your word for it and assume that there's more to her, but after episode one, I just don't know how to feel about her. Though Snow White Notes may be top contender for most disappointing anime, the first episode had me hooked in as a shamisen prodigy loses his sound soon after his grandfather dies, so he travels to Tokyo to discover something new that can inspire him to play again. If this show kept the premise the way it is as we'd follow this guy around Japan in search of a new sound while discovering new things he could never see outside of a small town, I would be in love with this show. I would love it to pieces. But no! Rich Mommy finds him at the end of episode 1 and tells him in the next episode that he needs to go to a school for shamisen players in order to find his sound. This literally turned from a soul-searching slice of life anime into a literal THERE'S A SCHOOL FOR THAT SHOW. I've never felt such disappointment from a show with so much potential until now. <laughs> The Saint's magic power is omnipotent is another isekai subverting my expectations in a really good way. A kingdom summons two women to become priestesses to help them in war, but they only really need one of them for now, so the douchebag prince chooses the prettiest one to stand by his side. This really doesn't bode well with the other main character left behind, so she decides to take an interest in potion making and magic because there's literally nothing else for her to do, she's that bored. This path leads her to discovering how harsh and serious the war really is while learning more that the prince really is a major douchebag protecting his pretty priestess waifu from doing her actual job. So I'm honestly really interested to see where this story goes. Odd Taxi is an interesting one to say the least. It shows the modern behaviors of society with influencers doing everything they can to become famous online, desperate individuals lying in their profiles to find true love, and shady criminals hooking up with the cops to frame innocent individuals and in their schemes. We witness all of this in the first episode while this innocent taxi driver just wants to live his life day by day. He doesn't want anything fancy and doesn't want to cause any trouble, just wants to drive his taxi and just be nice to others. I vibe with this guy so much, and this is definitely a one-of-a-kind anime you should check out. So I remember seeing my friend make a Facebook post about this anime called Super Cub. This was definitely random to me since I didn't expect him to rave about such a niche anime no one else was talking about. I finally got to see episode 1 and I can see why he loved it. A young girl lives a mundane life with no friends or parents. Out of the blue, she decides to look at some scooters and the store owner was kind enough to sell her a scooter for a cheap rate. And with this one purchase, she turned her mundane life into something worthwhile in her eyes. One minute she's struggling up a hill on her bike, the next she owns a motor scooter and is honestly proud of herself. It's a really wholesome experience that just inspires us to change things up a bit in our lives, so this is definitely a keeper. Dragon goes house hunting. I need more of this in my life. A cowardly dragon gets kicked out of his home and must learn to fend for himself all alone. He runs into a lot of sticky situations while meeting a few people willing to help him, but things finally take a turn for the better when he finds an elven real estate agent. I am not even mad, this idea is adorable and I love it. Okay, so remember when I said winter anime titles have been winning best anime of the year for me and Wonder Egg Priority was proving to be a serious competitor? Well, I think To Your Eternity may be a worthy opponent. And this is not because of Wonder Egg Priority's OVA ending that I haven't even seen yet. Be hearing a lot of bad reactions though, but I'll watch it when I can. To Your Eternity is everything I want a Snow White's to be where it's all about the journey and the character development. A mysterious rock lands on Earth and has the ability to transform into anything that comes 
comes near it. After being a rock for a very long time, an injured wolf dies right next to it, so it transforms into the wolf and it randomly finds the dead wolf's owner. He's a young man waiting for his people to return as he sits all alone in his abandoned village with only his wolf to talk to. The first episode alone ripped my heart out. I was enthralled with the idea, only to see it escalate by the end of the first episode. I will not spoil any details here, but just watch it. I love this idea, I want to see more from this transforming entity, and I want to see what it'll learn along its journey. And as for my pick for the worst anime of the spring lineup, let's just say it's bad on multiple levels. I wanted to like Yasuke. I mean, the story is basic when you get right down to it, but I was interested to see where this new adaptation of the famous African samurai would take us. But the overall delivery with its pacing and story elements turned this remarkable story into somewhat of a disaster, which as six episodes were given a retelling of this famous samurai, but also shoving in mecha suits and magic. I'm sorry, but why? Was the director trying to make this famous story turn into everything under the sun? Did this classic story really need to have mecha and magic to make it more interesting? Did they think no one would watch it because we already have Afro Samurai, so they threw in whatever looks cool in other shows to make it better? I... I honestly don't know how to react to all of this. I mean, some studios will do the same thing to other reimaginings, but Yasuke just feels like a rush project that had way too much on its plate. And then accusations started to spread out about how Netflix was underpaying the animators at Mappa Studio when they were working on this show. And I know a lot of you in the comments from my video covering this topic weren't too surprised and needed to remind me that animators in Japan don't have decent wages to begin with, to which my reply is, one, that doesn't make it right, and two, the accusations were saying animators were getting paid less than usual. As in their pay is bad enough, but Netflix really had to stick it into them and give them less than bad enough. These animators work tirelessly to produce quality content to the best of their ability while earning minimum wage. So we watch these shows to appreciate their hard work and show our support for them, only for Netflix to take advantage of their talent and spirits to exploit them, and all to produce exclusive content for their website. The only thing these streaming services are showing us is how low some companies are willing to go in order to get more customers, and I'm honestly at a loss for words. They should be showcasing new shows, rather than using their money to make cheap exclusive content like Yasuke and X-Arms. Yeah, I'm calling you out Crunchyroll. And at the same time, we shouldn't feel guilty for watching anime because these animators put their heart and soul into everything they produce. But seriously, something needs to change in order for them to have a better life. Thankfully, I have been seeing a lot of fans showing me Patreon links that allow you to support the animators and studios directly, like Studio Trigger, and even for animator dormitories. And just by googling Patreon Japanese animation studios, I discovered a couple making their own studio called Studio Bulldog, and it looks like they're creating some really promising content with what little they have. I was really happy to see the animator dormitory project on Go Get Funding turn into a major success with an amazing monthly donation going towards animators living in dormitories together. I'll leave some of these links for you all to check out down below. It's a positive way to show these animators that we love anime and we appreciate everything they do for our community and that they desperately deserve better. And on that note, let's wrap this video up quickly. Spring 2021 had its ups and downs, and the whole Netflix situation put me in a dark moment for a bit. But I am grateful to everyone who showed me other ways I can show my support for these amazing artists who shouldn't be taken advantage of. And again, if you want to show your support, links are in the description box down below. On that topic, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for helping me keep this channel alive and well. I'm still able to produce these videos with your amazing support and I can't thank you all enough. Thanks again everyone for watching, more awesome videos will be on the way, so stay tuned to Anime America.